Hi everyone, this is Winston from National Taiwan University. It's really my great pleasure to present in GTC 2020. And today I'd like to highlight um, those uh, deep learning methods for 3D regions, especially for point clouds. Because in the past three or four years, we saw um, huge progress in point cloud learning. And we found that it provides very important technologies for emerging 3D applications. And today I'd like to introduce several important deep learning methods across different um, applications. Before going to the details, I want to uh, express my best wishes to all the friends in, among the world that we, I do hope you can stay um, safe, healthy, and also peaceful among such tough situations. Introduce myself first. Uh, so officially, I am a full professor in uh, National Taiwan University, Taipei. And I got my PhD in um, 2007 from Columbia University, uh, New York. And my all my research focused on machine learning, uh, large scale visual retrieval and recognition, etc. And we did um, enjoy such exciting um, research uh, domain and uh, at least for 18 years, and uh, we believe that we will continue working on that because we saw huge opportunities in this uh, domain. Beside my regular academic role, I also uh, involved um, in industry in several roles. So we work closely with uh, leading companies such as Microsoft, um, IBM, and I, and I also co-founded a uh, few companies with my friends and also involved um, in academic work such as IEEE uh, for the journals and also magazine editor, associate editors, uh, etc. So this is actually the number four talks I, I had in GDCs and starting from 2017 and we try to introduce our research, especially how we design the uh, multi-model neural network um, for uh, numerous applications. And, and then in 2018, we found that uh, multi-model data is so important. So we, uh, we, we, we provide some systematic thinking how to deal with the data problems. And 2019, we found that face recognition is so important for many applications. So we bring those uh, findings in the academia and how we realize that in commercial uh, products all receive very positive uh, uh, feedbacks for our audience and today and like i like to introduce the the findings in 3d uh, point count learning and initially i lecture this as, as a three hours tutorial in ac mining media so 19 november in france and today we only have one hours but um uh, you can find more slides and details in the uh, uh, the web page here, and here's the, the QR code, you can find more details. Why we need to f focus on these 3D vision topics? Because in the past few years, we already find um, some superhuman uh, recognition capabilities over these uh, 2D image, images. Why? Because uh, I think over the research that find that uh, 2D uh, convolution neural network really um, solve lots of very tough problems uh, in 2D uh, images, even bring those superhuman capabilities and such as image cascation, object localization, and pose, or even segmentations, etc. And but but the world in 3Ds. So how we deal with the the, the 3D uh, data? If we can really deal with those 2D images so well, can we? do the similar things in the 3D world. And we found that uh, it's beside those uh, technology, there are also a couple of things that's going on here because they already lots of 3D sensors, 3D data and prices going down. And also we have strong needs and require the 3D technologies, for example, VR, AR, and also and robot either auto driving or even robotic arms. And also in the, the lots of 3D data, already in the world and how we utilize these 3D data and for design and even use 3D uh, sensors for face recognition, etc. 3D is 
is very different to uh, to this because we are right now in the past thirty or forty years we really have lots of methods we easily can deal with and to the uh, data so we can apply convolution and we can apply lots of operators among the two Ds but three D provide another views besides uh, an to this, for example, that in the early days, even this work was uh, published in ICV 2015, we people found that two D composition is so capable, so we want to apply on three D. But uh, even the early days, we don't know how to handle that because, for example, here just simply for a three D shape recognitions, and uh, because the three D we have we have multiple view, not only the two D view, so so. Um, the naive, but at that time was most effective method is try to um, uh, render different views among the uh, 3D objects because it's without the object, there are multiple view. And, and then finally, as, as many views as you sample, you have uh, better uh, accuracy. But there's seven problems because how you sample the views and, and which area might be the best view. And the other thing is, Every view need to go through a, a, a CN uh, new level here, so that would incur lots of computation and cost. And um, but it is is a kid off and and showing the how we deal with three D data. And it's it's so important uh, to deal with these three D data because they can enable lots of applications. I will show one application first, and this is the basic idea that since we already have lots of three D data in the internet, it is possible that we can. Um, map the to the images and to the three D shape. For example, that I I I, I really want to, I find a two D images. I I want to design a three D shape and and for the two uh, D images, but I want to utilize them from the existing three D models. Go do some search to speed up the process. Let's look at a demo here. So we take a pictures and from the 2D images, and we need to match the similarity to the 3D words. But here comes the problem that the 3D is multi views, and which view you need, you need to align with. And another example here is you can visualize the similar 2D, uh, 3D images. And you can uh, take another photo here. It's just a single view of the laptop, but how you make so so and three D is really bringing lots of exciting applications. But uh, today I would uh, roughly um, here's my uh, today's online. I would uh, briefly introduce what uh, will be the common three D sensor and data type we use, and also um, the three D uh, regions. And especially, I will focus. Um, the breakthrough for three D learning, and especially those in point cloud data, what will be the 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 main theme for the point cloud learning algorithms? And I will list um, one very important applications for uh, light object uh, detections. I probably don't have time to go through the other application in three uh, D face recognition uh, robot quest. Uh, detection or even uh, 3D quality enhancement, but uh, I would you can refer to my uh, the other tutorial in SMI Media, or I will show that in other uh, occasion. H. So uh, 3D sensors, and that uh, there have been lots of 3D sensors and 3D uh, data representations here. Um, originally, um, when you uh, most of 3D sensors, we can derive uh, 3D uh, point clouds. Um, but at that time, we don't know how to handle that. As, as I said, that we, as you got this um, uh, rich 3D sensor data, a very uh, dense point cows, initially we don't know how to handle that. So most of the time um, we handle, uh, we, we project 3D point cows into the projected view, RGB, 
the ODEP data house. And also sometimes we for for processing we quantize that into uh, the volumetric form. We also call it a voxel into the process. And here, why why this is so different? What's the difference between um, depths and also uh, point cloud? This is the most questions people would would arise when I mention this uh, topic. And let's look at uh, the the picture here. And for example, we got the uh, uh, 3D cameras or depth uh, cameras. With, and when you take the pictures, you, it, you can have the RGB and 2D images. And most of the case, we only use the depth image. The depth image, every pixel here is showing the distance to the appearance of the objects. And here is point cloud. Point cloud is, is, is when you do the same things from the device, you can observe not only the RGBD, but also the distance and even the location and to and it within this appearance. So actually they retain more geometry uh, uh, information, but it's, 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 it's more complex to handle. So they most of cases, they only use these uh, depth uh, data only. So you can imagine that you lose lots of 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 uh, geometry information when you quantize all these uh, uh point clouds into um the uh depth uh, images here so because for this two uh, d uh, pixel value is much easier to process and this is the trail uh for the uh for the uh, computation but um look at the other images here um that's what we used to do. For the three um, D data or depth data, we use used to handle RGB and also depth image here. But you notice here that usually the uh, depth images is, is broken in certain locations okay, because due to the sensing uh, device. That's why we mentioned that we need to in th there's a required work to do quality enhancement for these three uh, D sensing data. Is really uh, the Data is really important, useful for reapplications. So this is I will show you one example that actually the devs bring another context for and try to have to the um, detections. For example, the one of very important work right now is crowd uh, counting. For example, giving a photo CEO, you need to provide uh, the, the counting numbers, how many peoples here, and especially for uh, dense dense crowds. And in the past uh, three years, there's a couple of works working on that, but they are solely working on, on RGB uh, data, just counting, and most of them doing the regression to estimate the cost here. And we found that actually the size of the objects and also density will be depend on the depth. For example, that if you can really estimate the depth of the image here, and when you go further and deeper or far away from the cameras, the object, like the object here, that was appear smaller. And maybe if we can know the depth, so maybe we can use this context to help for the uh, uh, this uh, dense crowd and counting. And we, we, we really designed a very effective way. We found that it's really uh, helpful for uh, dense crowd uh, counting. And we have all these published ICV. Uh, workshop papers and we compare that with several uh, important um, benchmark data and found that when you augment the neural net with depth state tasks and you will improve this very chain task a lot. So depths of, of this 3D information really have a lot. How you use that? So we just mentioned um, depths and definitely the point cloud, they preserve more data. Let's look at the point cloud data. Here, say when you have an environment, you represent that in point clouds, you have rich geometry information for every point cloud here, you know their positions in the world and even their color, even norm position, etc. So, but but the, essentially how you do the computations. And then we'll look at that uh, later. And, and I will also uh, introduce what's the problem when you do the computations in uh, neural network and how we solve that. Um, because there are huge growing of the uh, sensors such as LIDARs and this, most of people use in um, auto driving that so you have a laser beam that would uh, scan the real world and when you hit the object, the object will uh, re uh, return to the cameras and use that to sense the distance to the object and also um, time of fry, we can use a time of fry 
to estimate the distance or use uh, traditional uh, the local solutions you use a stereo cam and to uh, measure the depth and distance to the um, objects and this is has been working on in the past 20 or even 30 years and I, we try to introduce the stereo vision uh, first uh, that's for example you you with uh, two cameras to estimate depth or estimate the 3d uh, visions and this is all idea that has been used in a, little, a lot already a lot uh, 3d uh, cameras and the the whole idea is they try to um, mimic uh, the human uh, visions because uh, we have two eyes that we know the distance between two eyes. And if, if we see that in the real world and the same points in the object, they have some disparity or distance. And we use this uh, the disparity or distance, they can be used to correspond to the distance to the objects, for example, the corner how the the corner point of of the the house objects here, and from the two different views, maybe they have different distance and to the left boundary. If we can measure do the correct measurements for this uh, special feature point, we can measure the distance. And then we can try to estimate the depth. This is uh, most of our traditional uh, depth estimation method did. And usually they do some AHA method to the feature matrix. But interestingly, and starting from uh, two years before, we found that it's so powerful for the neural network and, and people gradually use the neural network to do uh, the, the stereo uh, matrix or stereo to estimate the depths from the stereo cameras. And one of the uh, really interesting work is, is called PSM net. And, and they just uh, get the two eye images and use uh, uh, CN methods and to extract the high level semantic features. But the, the uh, and very important things in um, stereo matching is you need to estimate the feature point alignment and you, uh, you find the minimum cost to do alignment. And this is things we call uh, cost valent. And they, they, they found that using neural network to derive solutions around this cost valent is quite effective, but they, they really uh, bring this step out in the audit, but the cost is used um, quite intensive uh, neural network here. For example, for this one, they use uh, lots of encoded decoders and to to estimate the solutions for the um, uh, devs. And there's uh, the improvements in, in the other work in CPPR 2019 this year that they found that they further bring the uh, some uh, prior knowledges they found in traditional stereo matrix. They can use some uh, cost function to do guidings and they can solve these uh, cost volume and use them to estimate the depth disparity or depths better so so already so from this uh, work we already found that uh, neural network dealing methods they further improve the depth or disparity estimation from the traditional methods okay they bring robust depths or bring more robust disparity for this stereo cam and i think the most exciting one is those uh, point call uh, arguments because um, as we said, is the raw data that preserve the most geometry information, and also very important to many uh, sensors or many applications. For example, lidar, RGBD, or even we can use these uh, point cloud data in, in the CAT and three D models. Um, there are very um, exciting um, developments in the past uh, few years, but in general, we found that and, and how you deal with uh, the, the point, card, point card data, we can have in general two categories. One category called a voxel base, the other one is called a uh, point-based uh, method. And the, the, let's look at the voxel uh, uh, first. The voxel is the, the 3D version of pixel because the pixel is for 3D and they extend the, the idea to a 3D is called uh, voxels. And the whole idea is why we easily for us to handle the, the 2D image because we have pixel in, in the fixed grid so we can easily design the operation among these fixed grids. But in the 3D data or in the point cards, we 
And we did a point, we don't know their exact locations and we don't know how to look their neighbors. We don't know how to do the uh, computations. So uh, for the first solution for the voxel-based methods that based on 3D data, even there's a mesh or CD shape or there's some point cloud data, we simply do quantizations, okay? And, and this is called voxelizations. So we, we divide the entire space into some fixed grid uh, voxels or fixed uh, 3D uh, grids. So you could equally divide space in the 3Ds and we do quantization. We just simply counting that um, uh, which uh, voxels they exist, um, they exist uh, the point cows and we quantize that within that. So we can then doing the uh, all the computations, design all the algorithms in the voxel space, and uh, compare with two DCN that's extended to three D. So you can imagine that we can easily extend the the CN to the three uh, D tensor flow, so even the four D uh, tensor flow. Um, but there's definitely there's there's uh, some pro the cons. For example, the the first idea was introduced uh, by the uh, voxnet. And, and they they just showcase that um, doing this 3D voxel quantization, they could easily convert the light, either light up point count on data or the, uh, they can easily convert those RGBD data into the 3D uh, voxel. The whole idea, as we said, is just to divide this, the whole space into the 3D degrees and do the quantizations. And there are a couple, a couple of quantization methods. The whole idea is try to counting is how many pixels we in this grease and maybe they have different uh, intensity within different degrees. Uh, you should simulate this uh, 3D uh, voxel very similar to 2D pixels, but they just, just the, represent the, the intensity for uh, for 3D uh, features in the um, voxel. Based on the 3D, we can design uh, 3D convolutions and 2D convolution. But the, the whole problem is, 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 is here that because you want to do the uh, 3D voxels, um, you quantize that. So, so there will be lots of uh, grease because these are uh, cubic um, um, uh, compressively. So it's, it is from 2D to 3D. So you you will have lots of uh, voxels. So they only can have very small 3D grease and because uh, the computation cost and all the storage uh, or, or memory for that. So usually for these voxel-based methods, we only have very small resolution for, for example, there's uh, only 30 in uh, each uh, axis. But this is showing a very uh, promising results. The other problem is that there's a, we need, also need to do the 3D um, rotation uh, invariant problems. What, it, what the uh, also proposed to do is they, they augment the data set by creating the, the copies of the the uh, uh, input instance. For example, that I want to recognize these 3D objects, the same, very similar to multi-view, they just uh, create um, uh, the views from uh, a different an object and then do extract the 3D features on there. And even do the testing, they would do the poolings from the uh, multiple uh, views to extract the feature there. So, yeah. And it shows quite effective. For example, the, the first occasion is showing and uh, recognize the three objects in, in the um, in the real world. And you can find same day, there's similar idea can be extended to light others quite famous work called uh, Voxelnet. We, we, we introduce data in the um, LiDAR um, application. So as we said, the, the, the one of the problems for uh, Voxel-based method is their uh, computation cost because the, the storage and the computation is so large and for the Voxels. And so there are a couple methods and they try to uh, bring more uh, efficient uh, computation or efficient reputations for these uh, voxel uh, reputations. For example, that's uh, uh, one of the work is, is called ACNE because they think that uh, they want to, uh, there's always, for every object, there's always some um, cause of five reputation area. And, and for the cause, maybe you, you can use 
larger grid for that. And, and for those fine uh, parts, you can have more dense objects. And they try to encode that with Arcnet because Arcnet is easily have them to the indexing and for the computations. And, and we can also have some sparse uh, representation here. For example, for the easy case, we have uh, three, uh, nine uh, uh, grid here. So only um, five grids have been and occupied by the point cards, so we can index those uh, sparse GUI here instead using all the um, um, GUI here. And this whole idea really speed up computation or mi reduce the storage or cost for the for the uh, voxel based method. And this show also show very uh, 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 strong uh, right. class in different locations. And just look at the, the point count. So as we said, the point count might be the raw data will, um, which, keep, which keep the the north geometry um, uh, information. Is it possible to do the computation? Right. And, and we see what's the problem to uh, do the learnings directly from uh, point crowds. And the, the key thing is here is when you uh, use the sensors, for example, LIDAR, so RGB, Cameras are sensing the the real world. That you will you will every environment, every point in the environment, you will sense a point cloud on data. But you don't know the uh, there's the even sensing the the the, the same environment, you would uh, get a sensor data in different kind of orders. Uh, for example, that you, you, in this environment you have. Um, and um, point clouds and every point cloud have D dimension. D, you can use uh, three or four, even nine, if you further include the RGB data here. And even the same environment that would have as, as the same sensing device would sense uh, the, uh, the point clouds with different and, and orders. But um, there's a, always there's a, an older um, permutation problems, even sensing for the uh, same um, edges. And this is really uh, the, the top problems for point cloud. That's why they, we, even we early days, we already can sense the point clouds, but we don't know how to uh, handle that. But very interestingly, the, um, there's a nice work in, um, um, in CBR 2017, um, they found that they can introduce some symmetry functions and, and, and they would help to derive the permutation invariant um, um, capabilities and they would for the help to compute the uh, point clouds. What would the symmetry function? The symmetry function is that when you uh, po pass the point clouds into this function here, e and they would derive the same uh, result even you probably uh, uh, these uh, points or the, these uh, inputs with any in order, these are called uh, symmetry functions. And there's a couple examples of symmetry functions such as the max. So it takes the max values among all the inputs, it's still the same, no matter what the orders into the, uh, uh, the for the inputs. And the, same, the other function is plus and you can uh, divide the same values no matter how you permute uh, these uh, inputs. And this is very similar to the max pooling, average poolings in the uh, convolutions. Mm -hmm. So there's couple, uh, several um, proof in this um, point net uh, work and population in CVPR 2017. And they found that it, they can find, uh, if you can, they can further uh, find a, a symmetry function G here and among to aggregate all the point features um, from the point cows. And later when they aggregate a gamma function here, they can use this gamma function to approximate and the, the any continuous function that's they can design. So they can use combined with G and gamma to use that to approximate um, any uh, functions and they can uh, compute the sets of point cards um, here. So they use these ideas here, but, but they found that actually all these function learns is, 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 
it's actually they learn the non-uniform voxels, and in the paper they visualize certain and point functions, and they will see what kind of of of, of voxel distribution they they would activate this function, and they they found that the certain um functions that would correspond to um, certain um, point count distribution like this. So so we, we can easily interpret that when you do the, this uh, point count learnings, we should actually try to learn the non-uniform voxels among these um, uh, point counts. So um, for the main location, we can try to undo the um, Learnings and and we can take the point count input into the point and then we can extract the features and use the features to do further classifications and to detect the object here. So I think this is really bringing the first time that we can easily detect these point clouds and even uh, do the uh, into the uh, new network for the uh, known sim. And they they found that uh, in this network there also couple uh, a component. For example, this called. Um, a uh, TNN provide the um, transformation invariant capability, and for the whole um, uh, point point crowds, because it, you can imagine that in, within the crowd, there there were certain uh, transformations, is it that would better uh, do some normalization for their uh, positions, and simple so experiment they will find that these um, uh, components and even for those uh, spatial normalizations. Uh, method is so important. Mm -hmm. When they initially introduced these point nets, they does not really hugely outperform the traditional uh, 3D CN uh, method, for example, these uh, uh, voxel based um, methods. Uh, it's, it's on par with, really on par with the, uh, the performance, but they bring a very important um uh here these robustness for example that um they showed one of experience here that's when uh when you uh evaluate in a three D shape a data set you call that uh shamnet here when you try to reduce the number of uh point cows and we found that the point net method that we decrease um uh, quite uh, slow and but they would uh, the, the 3d voxel based method we uh, decrease sharply so it means that this uh, point count data they are more robust and to those um, uh, missing um, point counts or the the, the missing uh, features especially in the real world when we try to sensing that in the real world or in the uh, for the robot regions and this is a common problem. And so this this way uh, people try uh, try try to improve the point net uh, methods for numerous applications, and um, there's a further improvement called a uh, point net plus plus. And because of the original original uh, point net, there's no uh, layer of convolution just as CN did. So they further bring the hierarchy of uh, feature learning here. So they could easily have this kind of encoder, uh, decoder uh, features, just as uh, the two D CNDs. So what they did is they they leverage the multi scales with um, point net. For example, look at here. So they have um, layers of, of of point net operation. For example, that they can in this layer they can uh, compute the uh, the uh, point net feature first. And they aggregate the feature to some central ease, and then based on the central ease, they apply point net operations. Um, yeah. at the end, if you look at the instruction here, that they were sim sampling the central ease first, yeah. and then groove the points quite close to the central ease and compute the point net feature there and aggregate the feature to the central ease. Yeah. Among the central ease that we compute another layer of point net so they can um, further bring hierarchical and also layers of, of convolution among these point net features and they can further improve the accuracy. And definitely there would be, so point net plus plus might be 
the uh, most adapted uh, uh, point cloud uh, learning uh, features. Mm -hmm. Definitely, there are a couple uh, work try to improve the um, the point name plus plus. For example, the KB camp because they try they motivate they are motivated by the traditional two D camp because traditional two D camp they have fixed degree so they can easy to compute the computation. But there's no fixed degree in point um, cloud, so they introduce some kernels. So you can think about these kernels. They will try to have some anchors. And they use the anchors as fixed grids, and also they would have some weights, um, weights over those uh point clouds, and they would those uh not only doing the uh point computation, but that, that but they will weighted the the distance to this anchor here, and you can imagine they provide some um soft uh weights of soft distance. And to those point clouds uh, corresponding to the um, anchors, and they, they can also speed up the computation, and they also find very effective. And so this is KBCOM is also one of uh, common use platform for uh, point clouds uh, computations. They definitely there are other uh, very uh, ongoing, very exciting um, point based methods. You can refer them to uh, further applications. So it's also common use. Mm -hmm. In um, um for the point net for many uh, application uh, that's introduced one application here is called three D indoor segmentation. This is a very important application for uh, robots to navigate the environment. For example, there's a um, um there is a call, uh net, and the whole idea is that um among those uh, sensing three D uh, point cloud sensing for the whole environment we need to provide the semantic segmentation. We need to provide semantic labels for each um, point cause and they, they need to understand the floor, the wall, the door, or even the windows, curtains for the whole environment that we have robot to navigate the walls. And for this application, that's important. And so there's a uh, very exciting applications and that let's just give it a review. For example, that um they would uh, combine and to the uh, neural network, they will embed the 2D features into the uh, 3D uh, GUI for the uh, computations. And also, because the point clouds, they, we don't have uh, the fixed GUIs, and some people uh, introduce their code spray nets, they would um, align um, this uh, 3D point cloud into this uh, lattice and do the all the convolution computation on this fixed GUI. Uh, latest in instead of the two D or three D um uh voxels. and we found that actually um when we tried to start working on that uh, starting about two years before we found that um for uh semantic uh segmentations um definitely the the uh the global environments and um, provide a global context and then we can we can know that. Where the environment is, for example, this is kitchens, this is the bathroom, and if we know the context, then we we can do the uh, segmentation better. And definitely, the local information is so important. We found that this very uh, interesting that um, for the most part, well, they only utilize the three D uh, information here. But uh, in the past few years, we already have rich two D features. So why not utilize this very uh, rich two uh, D feature? We come up with idea is that we try to project these two uh, D features we observe to the three uh, D point cards. For example, that if you have a camera here and you can do a two D snapshot, we can simply apply a two D segmentation and from the every pixels two D pixel we can uh, extract very uh, rich high dimensional two D the two D features. And we, beside those uh, RGB, D, RGB features, we try to project this uh, rich 2D feature to every uh, uh, point cloud. Definitely there's some alignment issues because when you project to the three space, maybe you cannot align well to the point cloud. So we simply use some very centric interpretations, try to project those uh, 3D feature to those uh, point cards and, and they'll be weighted by the uh, distance here.
And even these uh, simple ideas try to enrich the uh, the point crowds with very rich uh, uh, 2D features. You can find that you can hugely uh, improve the um, detection, detection accuracy, accuracy in terms of MIO uh, you here compared with those uh, stable work and simply do this uh, 2D feature alignment and, and even and in um, early next uh, previous year, 2019, among the scanning and benchmark, this simple idea can and take the leaderboard. Um, so so there are uh, other 3D uh, data sets we can refer to, such as um, um, many um, streets in those scenes and such as um, ScanNet or ShapeNet, uh, et cetera. So, so we, for the indoor, we have NYU V2 ScanNet uh, Metapol 3D. This is uh, most uh, three, three indoor data most people use for the 3D models. We have a ShapeNet model land. This is most people use for the outdoors. We have some data set uh, called Kitty, and you've seen this mo most people uh, use. So um, the other important um, application is So let's uh, look at the other uh, important object uh, application for LiDAR object applications. So um, LiDAR is, is very important for um, autonomous uh, driving. So when you detect the 3D uh, objects from the uh, point cars, and um, not only provide the bounding box, we also need to classify the object class, uh, position, even the dimension and 3D pose, even the Velocities. Uh, there are lots of attributes you want to get from these the objects. Um, it, it can provide uh, these attributes can have for the object tracking, path planning, or even scene understanding, etc. But but it's really very changed based on these uh, sparse uh, point counts. And this is a real example that uh, we extracted from in Kitty. They use the lot of the same thing, the whole environment, and when you detect the objects, um, based on that um, it's it's very strange because there's more dimensions than um, and images, and this point as we said is an older that they're unstructured and really uh, sparse, and it, you cannot directly apply those uh, to the convolutions on them. So um, I think the most intuitive way is to do as it's very difficult to do the three Ds and people that when we now project the 3D back to uh, 2D. So this is most people adopt is called projection-based um, methods. We can, from the 3D point cloud, we can project and to the 2D, the, either the bright views, and um, is thinking about this 3D environment, right? So we can uh, visualize the, the, uh, the vehicles, what the vehicles seen from the bright view. We can also project the point cloud into the uh, from uh, view and we can uh, detect those uh, two views in the visually and then do maybe do the fusion the features and do the and to the detectors then output the 3d object uh, predictions and and as required by uh, these applications and there are a couple of works are going uh, in this way uh, the most interesting work is mv 3 d and this is this is really Quite representative and also state of art in 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 uh, lidar object detections. The whole idea is is here that they really use how to use all the modality and they have an a lidar bright view, they have a front view, but also take into account for the the RGB and to the uh, images. So imagine that for this um, object detection methods, we require the uh, Proposals. What they did is they they uh, derived the uh, the proposals in terms of three D proposals based on the um, bright view here. So so um, it, it it's very similar to uh, face RCN that uh, take these bright view features. They would um, detect the likely um, object class and also do the three D bounding box regressors, why they want to work on 3D because later then you use this 3D proposal and back project to and to the either into the um, um, 
LiDAR from view or to project to the image as image proposals. And based on this uh, feature that that proposal, they can extract the bright view proposal, they can extract the front view proposal, and they can have the image uh, proposals and extract the corresponding features and do the feature aggregations here and, 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 and use these three views, a rich feature to do the um, agitation and so the um, class, uh, classify their uh, type and also do the 3D body box uh, requests. And it is very, really quite uh, effective in these um, um, methods and details and what kind of front view they have. They, they further derive the high and distance intensities and use multiple features in the, in the front view. The same for the bright view, they also uh, try to utilize other features. For example, they for the height because in every RGB data, we have the X, Y, Z, right? So we also know the height for the, uh, the depth, they quantize, quantize the height into five high uh, levels and draw the to the view here, say they derive another features and do some normalization for the uh, point cloud densities. And also intensely that will be model the reflectance values of the point cloud. For example, when you uh, have the point cloud um, measured to the uh, trees or to the uh, vehicles because the, the material type, they have different uh, reflectance uh, values for that. Um, and, and use these multi-features to do the uh, uh, learnings. And it's quite effective. So there's the other uh, method that try to use uh, point-based method, try to use um, point, um, uh, point cards and use point net based method, try to model the, the, the feature. Here, for example, that's, as, as we just introduced in point net that get from this point cloud uh, data, so we can uh, try to use NLP to extract the features and do the poolings and represent all the point cloud features with some um, high dimension features. In general, there are two types of uh, method, two types of strategy try to use the, the um, um, point-based method. The, the first one is second stage classifier. They would, for example, that you have uh, start from the 2D proposals and 2D candidates and use uh, use uh, point to further verify um, the um, likely objects. And they also use point net to as basic feature extractors and combine with other 2D uh, methods and for that. Okay, so this is a look at the first case as um, using a point-based method as a second stage classifier. And so based on the images in general that you can, uh, based on 2D images, you can extract the 2D detectors and find the, uh, based on the candidate here, and based on all these candidates, and they just, or proposal, you just try to extract their corresponding um, point cloud data and extract the point net features here, all the point cloud features here, and then further refine with with the point cloud feature or even try to regress their uh, 3D um, bonding box. This is roughly the idea. One of the most re resented work is called Faustum um, point nets. And the idea is, is that the same, they starting from the 2D image, they detect the likely um, 2D um, objects here and they project back to their um, point cards because um, we don't know exactly um, where is the segment for the uh, the point card data here. So they call these uh, candidate regions as the frosten, uh, as frosten because this shape look like uh, the frosten here. So so they would locate some um, possible region that this other resign and do some fine grain uh, uh, classifications or regressions based on the detail uh, point cloud uh, features or point cloud uh, data. So the whole idea here is used to de to detect those uh, candidate region and project that back to the 3Ds and, and, and do some selection based on these point clouds and, and further refine with the uh, 3D uh, views. And, and there's a, a details here I will skip here. 
And the other type is we can use the uh, point based method as basic uh, feature extractors. For example, you got the point count here, either uh, based on uh, pixel or voxel uh, uh, partitions, and based on if voxel region extract the features, and you come out the feature map, and based on feature map, you can ex design 2D or 3D uh, detectors to detect the objects. The one of the most representative world is called uh, voxel name. The the idea is that for the entire world, they um, they separate the uh, the three D world x voxels, and within the voxels, they compute the feed feature, they aggregate all the point nets, uh, points, um, point cards within these uh, uh, voxels and compute their corresponding methods. These methods is very similar to the point uh, net uh, method, even they don't call it. But, but so you can imagine that when you got these, these high dimension um, features and the original voxel already 3Ds and they would come out of sparse 3D tensors and you just and take that and input and couple with some um, extend with some uh, object detection um, methods. You can imagine the computation cost is really high, but it's one of the set up for the uh, um, point based uh, object detection. It's, it's shown the effective and it's also very interesting in their world how they derive these uh, voxel wise um, features. And um, it's effective, but as we said, the voxel is so uh, resource or time consuming in 3D convolution. So there's other um, uh, revision, for example, the one of the um, uh, effective ones called seconds. They tried to, as we said, that they tried to introduce the sparse uh, convolutions for these uh, 3D um, voxels. And, and it's, it, it's quite effective. For, uh, and they also introduced the data augmentation strategies and later we will do a computation there. So recently there's a very interesting work called um, PointNet. So instead of computing the features in the 3D voxel, they found that uh, specifically in, in the LiDAR, if you want to detect the 3D objects, objects there's no layers in the uh, real world, for example, there's above the vehicle, it's impossible to have a vehicle. So instead of, of, of computing a voxel, they, they simply comp they only compute the pillars. So every location here, they have a pillar, they compute the features among the in, entire um, pillars. And, and, and so when you doing the computation, they can associate the pillar feature into the, uh, to the um, um, space and it, it can further reduce the uh, feature dimensions and, and, and they can uh, use existing and to the backbones um, to compute the, the pillar uh, features um, based on the, the point cards and even can uh, apply some, uh, for example, some efficient method called SSD and, and, and it's so efficient and, and it's so, so powerful. And if you look at the comparison, uh, yeah, it's somehow the step up um, in, in, in a point in computation for um, for LIDAR's uh, uh, learnings, a LIDAR based object detection. If you look at a uh, uh, very important comparison chart here, this is accuracy, so high is better. This is inference speed, so high is, is, is better. You will find that voxel net based methods is, is the, the accuracy looks good, but it's so the 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 inference time is so uh, high. I mean, inference speed is so low, and the second further improved that. But compared with point pillar methods, it's it's quite balanced of effectiveness and also uh, efficiency. And so data is always a key for the lidar uh, data. So we usually we have two uh, data sets. One is called Kitty, the other called NU. Since they always have pro and con, but this is um, most data say people use. You can see um, more uh, details uh, um, here. But I think Kitty is, is, is the uh, the very baseline benchmark people compare 
um, uh, with. Okay, because time I, I need to skip um, other things. So I won't give you a, a, a quick summary here. So uh, to end my uh, lectures, um, as we said, the 3D sensors are getting cheap and they use, have been used in um, many important uh, scenarios. So they really enable uh, uh, numerous exciting applications. I, I don't have time to cover all here, but, but it really imposed lots of great opportunities. And point cards, they return rich geometry information because uh, uh, it, it's, it's also imposed in the constraints. And starting from three years before, we gradually understand how to utilize, how to conduct learning in the prone car, so they also open the other um, opportunities. And still, there's quite an open research in adopting these or using these three sensors for numerous occasions. Even we working, on, we have been working on this for three years. We still see lots of great opportunity we can uh, work on. And and money model future definitely is required and really have lots of occasions. Um. And there have been lots of uh, uh, advancements for phone call learning in the past few uh, years. And as we also try to collect some 3D data, but it's so expensive. So they come up with another idea is how you, you leverage it to the or other data augmentation strategies to uh, compensate the the missing data for 3D. It's other things we can do. Um, the other thing is how you deploy the design 3D method into the real fields is definitely a, a changes. Okay, I, I need to end my talk with the, uh, I, I need to acknowledge that um, this really quite intense, uh, exciting research um, going on in our team. So I need to thank all my students here. They really contribute to the slide and also research work here. And then I also need to thank my uh, uh, industry and also academic sponsors for my uh, research in the team. All right, thank you.